Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, December 12, 2022. The country's first anti-corruption tip line was activated on Friday in a bid to engage the public in the fight against corruption and organized crime. The number is 888-MOCA-TIP or 888-662-2847. It was launched through a memorandum of understanding between the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency MOCA and Crime Stop. Director General of MOCA, Colonel Desmond Edwards, says the fight against corruption is much broader than law enforcement and requires an empowering of citizens to get involved. The participation of our citizens will enable us to develop good information, good intelligence, ultimately good cases, mm -hmm. and then we will have the kind of outcome we all crave as a country. Colonel Edwards says the cost of corruption globally is estimated at 2.6 trillion US dollars annually, and Jamaica loses 750 million of that figure annually. These funds, he insists, are usually diverted from critical developmental programs. Among the contributors to corruption are gang violence, trafficking of arms and narcotics, and cybercrime. Crime Stop Chairperson Sandra Glasgow stresses the integrity of the organization for the past 33 years in protecting the identity of citizens. We have remained resolute in our mission to detect, reduce, and prevent criminal activities, which is similar to your mission of identifying and targeting major organized criminal networks and public sector corruption in order to improve security and governance in Jamaica. A public education campaign will get underway to familiarize persons with the new anti-corruption tip line. Technology Minister Daryl Vaz is calling for an immediate suspension of copper export under the scrap metal trade. His call comes against the background of repeated theft of fiber optic cable amounting to millions of dollars in losses to telecoms companies. Minister Vaz says he will be writing to Industry Investment and Commerce Minister Aubin Hill to formalize his advocacy for a pause on the export of copper. Speaking at a recent press briefing, he gave assurance that this issue would be a top priority going into the new year to protect the investments of stakeholders. I want to send a very strong signal and those who are in this room and those who are listening know that when I say something, I, I don't take it lightly. And this is a absolute priority for me as minister and my ministry. In the meantime, the technology minister has announced that new measures will be implemented early next year to prevent the use of stolen cell phones. One of the proposed measures is for major network providers such as Flow and Digicel to disable stolen phones once reported to prevent phone thieves from accessing the devices. Minister Vaz says the Telecommunications Act is also being revised so that fines for theft and vandalism are included. Of course, we will go to the maximum fines that are allowed <clears throat> in the parish court, which I think is between three and five million dollars, and three to five years imprisonment. And a uh, second offense would be five million and up to 15 years. The technology minister asserts that the new measures will be a collaborative effort by all stakeholders, including the Jamaica Constabulary Force, to ensure their success. With the Road Traffic Act 2018 and the Road Traffic Regulations 2022 slated for implementation in February next year, motorists are being urged to cooperate with the rules of the road. Portfolio Minister Audley Shaw says the transportation sector is now in a transition period and requires a cleanup, especially in the areas of indiscipline and outstanding traffic tickets. He says a special program is being considered to provide a time frame for payments to avoid any disruption in the sector when the act and the regulations take effect. What I need from all of you, after we, we have this special program of transition into our new system, our new act, our new regulations, what I want, your commitment, is that you are going to follow the rules? Minister Shaw was speaking at the Transport Operators Development Sustainable Services launch of a 40-day road safety campaign. The data shows that up to December 8, 444 persons have been killed in 386 fatal collisions. A breakdown reveals that the top three categories with the highest number of fatalities were motorcyclists accounting for 134 deaths, pedestrians 96 deaths and private motor car drivers 80 deaths. 
The regulations passed earlier this year make provisions to better apply the principles and purposes of the new Road Traffic Act 2018. The regulations cover areas such as fitness, registration and licensing of motor vehicles, licensing of drivers, certification of driving instructors and licensing of driving schools, as well as traffic signs, speed limits and rules of the road. And finally, the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, is expanding its Drumadigate initiative through a partnership with Hardware & Lumber, h &L. 200 drums will be distributed per month for 12 months to selected communities under a Memorandum of Understanding that was signed last week. Executive Director of the NSWMA, Audley Gordon, says the partnership will allow the agency to strategically place receptacles across the island for persons to dispose of their garbage responsibly. He is encouraging Jamaicans to exercise care and consideration for the management of residential and commercial waste. We must take personal responsibility for where we live, for where we shop, for where we work, for where we walk. We must be responsible for the solid waste that we generate. Managing Director of h &L Marcus Richards says this public-private partnership will assist the NSWMA to deliver a first-class waste collection system. We consider this again a civic duty and will continue to stand beside the, the, the organization for as long as we can. Launched in November 2020, Drum at the Gate aims to encourage proper waste disposal through the containerization of garbage to reduce mosquito breeding sites, infestation by rodents, as well as garbage collection time. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.